What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson in the DA. All right, it's Positivity Day, okay? You guys are always on my head saying I'm always so negative, all right? I'm never positive about anything. So here's some positivity because this is actually something that I'm starting to get a little bit excited about when it comes to Superman Legacy and this cast that they've laid out so far. I mean, listen, I'll be honest. First guy, first guy that said it, man, hey, I don't know about this James Gunn guy. When he got rid of Henry Cavill and he said that I'm going to be writing Superman Legacy. Number one, you got rid of a guy that I feel embodies Superman all the way around. Looks like he just walked right off of the comic book pages, you know, in Henry Cavill with Superman. I mean, you you just got rid of the perfect Superman, in my opinion. But then the other thing is James Gunn is doing Superman. I don't know if his style really fits the kind of Superman film that I want to see for myself. Now, that's just me, you know. But I give everything a chance. And if he nails it, I'll admit, hey, I was wrong. I was wrong. James was right. He did the right thing by rebooting this whole situation. Uh, But yeah, we're starting to get an idea of who's going to be in this thing. The cast so far for Superman Legacy. And listen, this thing looks dynamite. All right. This looks dynamite. This cast. And then the characters that he's going to be putting this thing. Very, very interesting. James Gunn. He likes to dive into characters that a lot of people aren't familiar with. And so I'm really interested to see what he's going to do with some of these characters. Let's go ahead and jump through the cast list and let's see what we got. All right. So obviously right off the bat, we're going with David Cornsweet, Clark Kent, Superman. All right. And I said from the very beginning that, hey, I like this casting. I like this casting. When they had first announced it, I said, you know what? He looks the part. I'm not going to lie. He looks the part. He looks like a young Henry Cavill, or he could be a younger version of Henry Cavill's Superman. He's just not as physically imposing. But apparently this guy is actually getting in the gym and he's trying to bulk up and get in shape and get ready for this role. So I'm like, cool. All right. You're going to not do the whole Robert Pattinson thing. You're actually going to bulk up. You're going to give the people what they expect out of this character. All right, bet. So I'm good with this so far. Superman, he looks the part. Young, Perfect look. Okay, I'm good with this. Next up, of course, we got Rachel Brosnahan as Lois Lane. And hey, I like this casting as well. All right. Plays good parts. She's a good actress. Definitely looks the part of that like investigative reporter, super nosy. Kind of got that Margot Kidderness about her too, right? Kind of has that Margot Kidder feel about her with her acting. So, yeah, I think that she absolutely, and this is actually, in my opinion, a little bit better than David Cornsweet as Superman. I think she absolutely nails Lois Lane. So I don't have any problem with this at all. Now, this guy, this was the shocker. Skylar Gisando as Jimmy Olsen. At least I think that's how you say his name. Everybody was stunned with this one, right? Hold up. You mean to tell me we're going to get a Jimmy Olsen that actually looks like Jimmy Olsen? A white guy with like, you know, reddish, sandy brown hair or something like that. You mean to tell me that we're actually not going to have a race swap Jimmy Olsen? What the heck is going on here? See, this is when you start saying, oh, maybe James Gunn might be on to something. You know, you start feeling that way because you're seeing like this guy is going to cast this thing appropriately, at least when it comes to the major people. We still haven't seen Perry White, so we don't know what they're going to do with Perry White, you know. Uh, Zack Snyder race swapped him. Are they going to do a race swap with Perry White? We don't know. Okay. But nevertheless, they nailing Jimmy Olsen. That's a feather in James Gunn's cap. So good on him. And look, I mean, this guy just looks the part. He looks like a young kid photographer. You can see Jimmy Olsen. This is actually kind of cool. Then we get to Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor. Now, you guys know I'm really excited about this one. I was probably the most excited about this casting because it's like, all right, what are they going to do with the villain? And I don't know if Lex Luthor is going to be the main villain. They haven't really addressed that piece yet. I'm kind of hoping he isn't, but he's in the film and he's a presence. You know, I just want him in the film and being a presence, but I still want like a Metallo or a Brainiac or something that we haven't seen before. That's the kind of villain that I want. But the fact that he is going to be in this and listen, Nicholas Holt is a great actor. He has a lot of range. He can play multiple parts. I know T wasn't very excited about this. Oh, I can't see him being a ball guy. Well, he can be a ball guy, shave his head, and he looks like he can play like a business tycoon that's also like a scientist that's kind of a geek, nerdy scientist, but at the same time, a ruthless business tycoon, a businessman. That's what you want out of your Lex Luthor, all right? You want a guy that's ruthless. You want a guy that's unforgiving. He's intimidating. He's lethal. I think Nicholas Holt pulls all of that off. Just a younger version. That's it. But I think that this guy, he's going to make a fantastic Lex Luthor. 
Then we got Sarah Sampaio as Eve Tessmacher. Now, I don't know why Screen Rant chose this picture for Eve Tessmacher. I got a different picture right here of Sarah Sampaio. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there's somebody that Lex would have in his office, right? Okay, Nicholas Holt Lex ain't going to be running around with no dumpy broad. He's going to have a fine Eve Tessmacher, and that's what we got here, okay? So, yeah, that's Eve Tessmacher. I, I mean, yeah, this is going to be really interesting because putting this character in tells you that, yeah, we're going to get all the different facets of Lex Luthor, you know? He's not just going to be yelling instructions to this chick. I think he's going to be having some very deep and interesting conversations with this uh, with this Eve Tessmacher. All right. So, yeah, I was excited to see that. It's like, all right, man, they going all the way. This is this is dope, y'all. This is dope. Uh, then we got Maria Gabriela DeFaria as Angela Spica, a.k.a. The Engineer. And I'll just be full disclosure. I am not as familiar with the authority um, as a lot of other folks. Um, as you can see, she says here, yep, she's notably a member of the authority, a superhero group rumored to be in Superman Legacy in order to set up their own impending film installment. Yeah, so they're using uh, this film to kind of, you know, springboard the authority into their own film. I don't have that much knowledge on the authority. I've read a couple of books, so I know who they are, but that's about it. You know, I don't have a lot of, you know, the knowledge. But So I don't know what to expect from this character. They're saying that she's going to be a villain, you know, or she's going to be playing more of a villainous role again. I want Brainiac, okay? Give me Brainiac. He should be, they, they should have already had him in a film at some point. And I hope James Gunn just say, hey, man, we're just going in with the Brainiac. We'll have some other villains in here. They'll be villainous roles like Lex, but they won't be like the main villain, you know? They'll just be kind of side villains, you know, maybe working with Brainiac or something like that. But anyway, yeah, that's the engineer. Nathan Fillion is Guy Gardner, a.k.a. the Green Lantern. I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you putting Guy Gardner in this thing? The Green Lantern? Ah, this is interesting. Now, I don't know what's happening here. And this uh, article even mentions it right here because it says, yeah, Gunn previously announced Lanterns as a DCU TV series, which would focus on Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart, uh, the two further members of the Green Lantern Corps. So why uh, Guy Gardner? What's going on with this one? Is I, I have no idea. I have no idea where they're going with this. They could go in a million different directions. But nevertheless, I like Nathan Fillion as an actor. I can absolutely see him playing Guy Gardner. I can see him playing the Green Lantern. Uh, this is interesting. It's it's kind of cool, too. It says Fillion has worked on every one of Gunn's projects, starting with Slither, going all the way up to Guardians 3. Um, yeah, so this is awesome. And then, of course, he has experience in acting with Saving Private Ryan and Night Hunter. Yeah, this, this one right here. This one shocked me. And that's when I was kind of like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. All right. We going somewhere now. And then we got Isabella Merced as Hawk Girl. Um, yeah, I think this is all right. You know, Hawk Girl is a popular character, obviously, member of the Justice League. Not sure how Hawk Girl is going to fit in with this particular story. You know, I think it's going to be one of those situations where James Gunn just brings Hawk Girl in. She's in there real quick, just maybe for one scene, and then she's out of there. They're not going to really touch on her, as well as the following two characters, which we'll get to in a moment. I think these are going to just be real quick in and outs, you know, just a scene, just to show, hey, there's other other superheroes in the world, that sort of thing. Um, as far as the actress is concerned, I know that she was in, it says here, Transformers last night. She's like the little girl in Transformers last night. Obviously, she was also in Dora the Explorer. I didn't see the Dora the Explorer movie. So, you know, I don't know much about her outside of that. Um, although she's going to be in um in that uh Madam Web movie. She's going to be in Madam Web. She's one of the uh four chicks in Madam Web. So she's dipping her toe into the super superhero genre. Uh should be interesting. But yeah, that's Hawk Girl. And then we get to the last couple of guys, all right? And I think these last two are definitely going to be connected. Uh, you have um, Mr. Terrific, basically, is going to be Eddie Gathi. Um, and you guys will remember this guy, of course. He was um, Darwin in X-Men First Class. Um, so, you know, he's going to be an interesting character. I've I've never really been a huge fan of Mr. Terrific, just to be very honest with you. I like superheroes that are superheroes, you know, and Mr. Terrific just seems like a member of an ensemble group. Nothing wrong with that, but, you know, just never been my favorite character. Uh, but then we get Metamorpho, uh, who is going to be played by Anthony Kerrigan. Uh, this guy always shows up and stuff. I see him all the time. Let me see. What else has he been in? Yeah, The Blacklist. I think I remember him from The Blacklist. Um 
Yeah, Victor Zaz and Gotham. So yeah, and Mist and the Flash. So he has some superhero backgrounds, obviously. I just see his face all the time. Um, he's going to be metamorpho. Makes me wonder if they're going to bring in Plastic Man because I know that uh, there's a superhero team, the Terrifics, uh, with Metamorpho and also with Mr. Terrific. So, you know, that'll be interesting to see if that comes to comes to play. But that's it. That's the casting for Superman Legacy. Listen, I think it's great casting so far. And I like the fact that they're going to have some very interesting, you know, side heroes popping up in this thing. I'm not sure exactly where they're going to go with all of this, but I'm intrigued now. OK, I'm intrigued. And knowing James Gunn, he does very well with the large ensemble cast, obviously Guardians of the Galaxy, obviously the Suicide Squad. And the trick is with those ensembles, do you keep an eye on the ball? You know, this is obviously going to be Superman's film. And, you know, he does a good job of making the film belong to the main character, even though he has this large ensemble cast around the Guardians. Obviously, with Star-Lord, we know we have the firm focus directly on Star-Lord and his story. So I think it's going to work out. I think it's going to work out, but we'll have to see. But so far, the cast and what he has planned, it looks very intriguing. But you guys let me know what you think about Superman Legacy and this casting. I think it's a dynamite cast. You know, I'm not going to lie. I think it's a dynamite cast so far. But we'll still have to wait and see. July 11, 2025. Can't get here soon enough. But you guys let me know what you think. Jump down in the comments. Give me your thoughts and opinions on that. And thanks for watching. See you next time.